Glaucoma is a condition that can cause permanent damage to the retina and the optic nerve. In most cases, but not all, IOP is elevated. The most common types of glaucoma are classified as open angle or closed angle. The most common type is primary open angle glaucoma, in which the outflow of aqueous humor is impeded, causing IOP to rise with the progressive loss of vision. Closed angle glaucoma develops when the iris is displaced forward, blocking the outflow of aqueous humor at the angle between the iris and cornea. This type is also called acute glaucoma because the onset is sudden, causing the IOP to rise quickly and dramatically. If untreated, permanent vision loss occurs within days to weeks. What are the risk factors? Glaucoma is more common in older adults and people who have diabetes mellitus, hypertension, severe myopia, and retinal detachment. And in those who have a family history of glaucoma, Eye disorders that increase the risk of glaucoma are tumors, inflammatory conditions, trauma, including surgery and degenerative conditions. Signs and symptoms common to both open angle and closed angle glaucoma include increased IOP, although this may be much higher with closed angle. Changes in vision appearance of halos around lights and an optic disc that appears whiter, deeper, and pale. Other manifestations differ with the two types. With open angle glaucoma, there can be gradual onset of symptoms, decreasing visual acuity that does not respond to new eyeglass prescription, decreasing peripheral vision, and mild aching in the eyes. Features of closed angle glaucoma are a sudden onset, severe pain, blurred vision, head or brow ache, nausea, vomiting, cloudy corneas, and red sclerae. So what about diagnosing? Open angle glaucoma is often detected during routine eye examinations. A tonometer is used to measure IOP which normally ranges from 10 to 21 millimeters of mercury. Tonography graphs the outflow of aqueous humor. Gonioscopy provides a view of the drainage angle in the anterior chamber and assessment of visual fields detects progression in the loss of peripheral vision. The management of glaucoma includes drug therapy that decreases IOP by reducing production or increasing outflow of aqueous humor. Drugs that decrease aqueous humor production include beta adrenergic blockers such as timolol or betexolol, alpha adrenergic agonists such as aproclonidine, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors such as acetazolamide or topical dorsolamide, trade name Trusopt, and systemic osmotic agents like mannitol. Drugs that increase outflow of aqueous humor include cholinergics such as pilocarpine and carbacol, non-selective adrenergic agonists such as epinephrine, prostaglandins such as latanoprost. In many cases, open angle glaucoma is effectively managed with drug therapy. If drugs fail, trabeculectomy, trabeculoplasty, or filtering surgery may be done. Laser trabeculectomy creates additional openings in the trabecular meshwork to improve outflow. Filtering surgery creates a fistula between the anterior chamber and the subconjunctival space to allow aqueous humor to escape. Another procedure damages the ciliary body to decrease the production of aqueous humor. With closed angle glaucoma, the first pressure is checked, reduced pharmacologically, then surgical intervention creates an opening in the iris, an iridectomy or iridotomy to provide a channel for the outflow of aqueous humor. The nursing diagnoses for the client with glaucoma include deficient knowledge, risk for injury, disturbed sensory perception, acute pain with closed angle glaucoma, fear, and ineffective therapeutic regimen management. People who have open angle glaucoma usually are treated as outpatients. Client teaching emphasizes the importance of continuous drug therapy to prevent progressive damage to the eye, proper self-medication, and the symptoms that require medical attention. Client compliance can be a problem because the symptoms are minimal and changes progress slowly. 
Clients who have acute closed angle glaucoma will probably be hospitalized. Prescribed medications must be administered promptly and on schedule. The possibility of blindness is very frightening. Provide simple explanations of what is happening and what is being done. Explain that prompt treatment can minimize permanent damage. To review the care of a client who has severe visual impairment, just use the navigational prompts to go onto the section on cataracts. Post-operative care is similar to that for the cataract client. Caution clients not to take aspirin in the post-operative period because it increases the risk for bleeding. The most serious post-operative complication is choroidal hemorrhage. This occurs when IOP is too low and fluid enters the space between the choroid and the retina. The separation of these layers deprives the outermost layer of the retina of its oxygen supply. Symptoms, decreased vision, deep eye pain, and changes in vital signs should be reported to the surgeon immediately. With good care, most clients with glaucoma are able to control the condition and avoid eventual loss of vision. Your client teaching is an important way to help them achieve this goal.